strange. I don't know what other word to give it, but it seemed so easy for them to walk in. I mean, I was an official business visitor with multiple scheduled appointments in these buildings and I couldn't get into them. I couldn't get into them with a congressman at arm with me saying, mm. I want this person to come to my office. Yet this small insurrection of people were able to that easily walk in. And when you look at even the mainstream media videos of them going in once on the inside, they were walking, staying within the ropes. <laughs> Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Now, my next guest is somebody that I've had on the program many times. She's been on some of my live debate uh, coverages, but tonight she's actually not here in any of those capacities. It's primarily because she just happens to be an eyewitness to the events that were unfolding in the capital city last night. So now we go to, from U.S. Term Limits, Shanna Chambly. Uh, thank you so much for agreeing to be with us, Shanna. Uh, thank you for having me, Caleb. And, and as I was saying, and I know that you wanted to make this clear too, uh, you weren't actually there at the protest because you were protesting. You were just there and happened to be in D.C. and happened to witness some of these events unfolding, and that's why I asked you to come on. Yes, I, I was there in capacity for my work with U.S. term limits to mm -hmm. deliver plaques to our congressmen who have signed the pledge to support our congressional term limits resolution. And had I known that these kind of events would have been unfolding at the time that I would be in the city with five of my children, I would have probably chosen other dates. <laughs> right, which would make sense. Um, but, right. but the reason I did have you on, and I actually tried to get a, a few other people that were in Washington, D.C., I got in contact with Barry Moore and, and Tuberville's campaign and tried to see if, if they were available. But uh, I appreciate you coming on and giving us just some eyewitness testimony. So uh, I'm doing this because it's, it's spur of the moment and it's breaking news. Uh, I really have like nothing planned. I'm just going to, to get what your account was and what you saw. So just tell us kind of how everything started to unfold yesterday. Okay, well, throughout the day, myself, my husband, and five of our children were there doing our work of delivering plaques, and we were mainly at the Capitol area. I had friends who were down near the monument when Trump came and spoke, but um, mm -hmm. we were not there present for that portion of everything going on. But I, I had some communication with people that were there, and it all seemed to be calm and well. And we mostly tried to avoid the crowds for the fact that I had my children with me, and it made me a little nervous of having them right. involved in that big of a crowd and with everything going on and um but then later in the day of course the crowd moved you know they marched and moved toward the capitol where we were um we did take a, a small ditch out and drove over out of the city to have lunch and then came back uh, to complete our meetings and that's when we had to drive through the masses and get through everything where everybody was there. And I'm not sure, I haven't even had the time to look and see what kind of numbers the media reported, but there were tens of thousands of people just there on the Capitol lawn. And we weren't even sure of what exactly was transpiring at the time, but we happened to be on Independence Avenue there near the office buildings facing the Capitol mm -hmm. at the time of the breach. Um, we didn't know that the breach was happening until one of my children pulled it up on a live news reel from their phones and was playing it out loud for us as it was happening. Mm -hmm. But we witnessed the police marching through in like a platoon fashion on foot with respirators on carrying tear gas mm -hmm. and um, making their way toward the Capitol. Um, the most notable thing that I like to point out is you know, of course, I have no idea what things look like on the inside based uh, other than what I've seen from media sources. I, I, right. I you've only, seen the same news coverage we have on that front. Right. I, I only know what I personally saw from the outside, which mm -hmm. was tens of thousands of people gathered on the steps, the lawn and in the streets. Um, it, terribly hard to drive through, by the way. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to and, drive through D.C. on a normal day, so yeah. It, I, right, and understandable. this was definitely not a normal day. But the most notable thing, that, the takeaway that I had from that was tens of thousands of people standing there. The doors have been breached. It's being reported on the news that we're hearing as we're there on the ground. And those people didn't move. They all stood in 
place, even on the steps of which where the doors had been breached, there was not a mad rush of people going in. Mm -hmm. So there was a relatively small group of people that actually made their way in and they were not followed by masses of people. And I mean, I have personal opinions on, I mean, I, I know that there was probably people on various sides that made it in. I'm not sure who it was that instigated the getting in or exactly how they happened to breach totally secure doors of the, the building and then the chambers and offices and that sort of thing with the kind of security that was in place. Right. But I do know that the majority of supporters there did not follow and I mean, nowhere near any kind of majority and people continued to stand outside gathered. And even at that point being there during that moment, we didn't have a moment of feeling unsafe. And like I said, I had five of my children there and I was already on heightened alert of right, feeling right. like it could be a hairy situation and mm. it wasn't. So one thing that I wanted to ask about on that front, um, because I do think that that's valuable information, especially because we're looking at this from the standpoint of, you know, like you said, about tens of thousands of people there. And then we have, I don't know, a few dozen people that go inside. Um, of course, that's not excusing it or saying that that's OK or anything like that. But it, but it is a, worthy of note that you have a, a very, very large crowd and then a very, very small minority of that crowd breaking in. But one thing that has been speculated back and forth from both sides is this is supposed to be an incredibly secure building. There's supposed to be very high security. What was your opinion on the gathering that day and things like capital security, police presence? Were they abundant? Did you think that it wasn't adequate for a crowd that size? Just what were your observations on that? Oh, my personal observations on that is that it was incredibly abundant um, to hmm. the extent that I had official business meetings within the Capitol and the office buildings for that day. Right. And they sent out notices to all of the staffers denying access to anyone who had official business, which was me. Mm -hmm. And even to some staffers, even badged staffers who had the ability to that work there were told that they could not enter into work. I was denied access access to all buildings and the meetings that I was able to conduct had to be done outside with the congressman that I had meetings with actually braving the masses and what was going on to come outside and meet with me because I couldn't come to their office. Mm -hmm. They could not even personally escort me to their office. Wow. I mean, it's, it is so crazy. And, and this is the reason that it upset me so much. And you, you and I've known each other for a while now, like to me, the, the thing that just, I couldn't get over is that watching this on the news and, and all these events unfold, this looks like a scene that would have happened in Beirut or Venezuela, you know, something that happens in a, a banana republic or a Muslim theocracy or some kind of dictatorship after an election, not something that happens in America. Is is that an accurate understanding? Is it somewhat overblown because we're just getting a laser focus on the, the breach that happened? Or how, how was the entire city of, of D.C.? Was it like that? Or how would you characterize it? Um, actually, you know, throughout the beginning parts of the day before everything moved to the Capitol, it, we were able, like my, one of my biggest worries had been finding parking, you know, even on a normal day in D.C., right. how hard that is No, I've, I've done that. So, yes, I can vouch for that. <laughs> we even found parking a block and a half away from the office buildings where we needed to be. No issue. We hmm. drove straight into the city, had no issues. Um, actually, my son had made an observation as we were walking through and he's like, okay, this is kind of an embarrassment. There's not that many people here. We didn't realize at that time that they were all gathered at the, at the Washington Monument and those mm. grounds. And of course, when it made its way to where we were, we realized just how massive it was. Right. But um, we navigated our way throughout the Capitol area where we needed to be to conduct our business as easily as normal on the outside. Of course, we couldn't enter the buildings that we had planned to enter, but um, mm. it didn't feel unsafe. And even in the moment of that going on, it it wasn't chaotic. Um, we we were approached by one slightly unhinged guy, but you know there's always one, right? 
<laughs> well, that's true. And, you know, just to be perfectly frank about it, I'm not saying that that wouldn't have happened if that march hadn't been going on. Sometimes I'm approached by unhinged people just randomly in D.C. Um, right. So that, that does happen, you know. Um, and But my, my kids even laughed that off. Um, we happened to be in the van at that time and we were trying to exit the city and we were having to drive through the masses of people and it took a while to get out. And um, that was at the same time period when we received the emergency alerts on our mm -hmm. phone that Mayor Browser had issued the curfew and that sort of thing. But um, so there was there was one mildly unhinged guy that was carrying a very tattered, torn and dirty American flag on a pole that he was also dragging on the ground. And he was every vehicle that became stopped. He was approaching the vehicle and screaming into the windows. Um, well, a few expletives that I won't repeat, but um, I appreciate that this being a family <laughs> show, but at, but asking if we were patriots or communists and um, let's just rolled up the window and we ignored him. And once we were able to get through, I mean, there was no pushing or shoving on the van. There was no people, you know, th there was nothing that made me feel unsafe with my children. And even at the points when we got stopped in, in trying to get out, I would even exit the van and take pictures and that sort of thing without feeling at risk. Okay. Well, I appreciate you giving us that, that insight to sort of the, um, because, you know, of course, the focus, and, and I'm not blaming the news media. I mean, normally I'm, I'm pretty critical of them. But in this particular case, like them laser focusing on the breach and what happened and showing videos of that over and over again is not a bad thing. That's what they're supposed to do. Right. Um, but I, I actually do feel a little bit better now knowing that it was pretty much uh, limited to that area and that building and, and the outer areas were not nearly as chaotic or, or problematic as the way you're describing them. Right. Well, I mean, even in the moment of that going on, people mm. were mingling about in the streets, in the way of vehicles, that sort of thing. I mean, just the the mass of people that were there, there just wasn't room to contain them all. So they were all kind of in the way. But there, there was no mass rush toward anything there. I mean, it was just it was a lot of people, but right. it, it didn't feel unsafe. Well, now, I've heard a criticism of people on the the, the left, especially that have been saying that essentially uh, with one of their issues with all this and something that it seems kind of fishy to them is that it seems as though, especially with this being such a, a secure building and it being a big day, uh, why is it that there was not a, a more ready response by the police and, and by like, why were people even able to get in? And you're somebody that travels around the country doing this. You've been to, you know, countless events and political uh, rallies and like I have. I mean, it's it's the same kind of thing. And I just want you to react to this and tell me if I'm off base here. Possibly, I, I'm not saying that this is absolutely true, but possibly one thing is th they're kind of used to Trump events. And this is really the first one where anything even remotely similar to this happens. I mean, usually when you when you go through and there's like a, a MAGA march or something, the streets are actually, weirdly enough, cleaner than they were when they took the streets. I mean, they're not only not breaking any laws, they're actually uh, cleaning up the streets when they do this. And so I'm not trying to, you know, excuse or gloss over anything like that. I'm just saying that do you think maybe because you've been to a lot of these events just like I have, that the police maybe weren't as ready or weren't expecting this is because of that and because they're just accustomed to these things going off peacefully? have a hard time believing that they weren't prepared for this. I mean, it's DC. They're used to marches from all sides and protests. And the Capitol building is one of the most secure places that you can ever be. And right. I mean, I've been, I, mean, I've I been imagine there. the Pentagon would be about the only one that would be more so right. and, and maybe the White House. And so I, I would have a hard time believing that they weren't prepared for what was going on. And being that I was down at the street level, not there to see the actual breach of the doors happen, right. I still, I mean, I have my personal questions on how exactly that happened. The doors that they chose to go into, they're not the general, normal public access doors that you go into anyway. Mm -hmm. How were they opened? How, and I, I have seen some video, even video from a personal 
friend of mine, I, I won't name this person, he's probably going to face some repercussions for having been one of the people that entered um, and happens to be an elected official in a state that I work. Okay. Um, that it, his personal video showed him casually speaking with the Capitol Police as he walked in videoing. And hmm. the people, I mean, they walked in, they were loud, and it was a little chaotic. He actually began screaming at them in the video to not destroy things, that this was their house, and that he was there just simply documenting this for media purposes of what was going on. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it was a little strange. I don't know what other word to give it, but it seemed so easy for them to walk in. I mean, I was an official business visitor with multiple scheduled appointments in these buildings and I couldn't get into them. I couldn't get into them with a congressman at arm with me saying, mm. I want this person to come to my office. Yet this small insurrection of people were able to that easily walk in. And when you look at even the mainstream media videos of them going in once on the inside, they were walking, staying within the ropes and yeah, there is, there is that one video of them like smashing in a window to get into a door, but if I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong, isn't that an internal door? Like it's a door that leads from one yeah. room to another, not the external door? Yeah, that, that was an internal door. So they had already breached the outer doors at that point. Okay. Um, now, I don't, you know, want to go all Alex Jones on you here. So I'm just, I really am just asking the question because I don't know. Um, do you think that it's it's possible that this was somewhat planned and the police just kind of intentionally backed off and let it happen? Like, and if that happened, like, I don't I don't even know how that would have happened. But um, do you think that that's at least a possibility here? Oh, I, I, it's it, it's now 2021 after the year 2020 that we've just gone through. I guess right. anything is possible. Um, I I have some. Oh, I okay, have personal thoughts yeah, go ahead. on that, but um, I guess any anything is possible. And I, my two, two trains of thought go through whether whether the police felt so overwhelmed and unable to control masses that they chose to stand back to protect themselves, or whether it was somewhat allowed to happen. I'm not quite sure. I mean, it does seem odd to me, and, and this is just my thoughts on it. I, I don't know that police did that. It, it's quite possible that that is not the case, and I'm not trying to spread rumors or say that I've got some kind of inside track or anything, but it does seem very odd that a building that is this secure, where they knew that there was going to be uh, marchers and protesters that, um, I mean, this is, this is the Capitol building. How do you not make a stand here um, if you're the police officers and, and like, have a barricade and... I, I don't know, and it, it, frankly, it bothers me because um, there's only two answers or two possibilities that I can come up with in my own brain, and either one of them are good. And one is that the they were just kind of taken by surprise and not really prepared for that, which that's not good. Um, no, and and I'm frankly, I have a hard time swallowing that. And then the only other explanation I can come up with is the one that I'm kind of speculating on right now, which is that for some reason they were either ordered to stand down or just took it upon themselves to, to take a step back and let it happen. And, and I don't like either one of w the implication of either one of those uh, trains of thought. So, Well, I can tell you that today in the city that their demeanor was seemingly different than it was yesterday. With uh, When we were in town today to have a meeting with one of the congressmen that agreed to come outside and meet with us, mm -hmm. um, they were erecting... Um, gates or fencing around the entire Capitol grounds perimeter, and so right. So not now, even just today, this building; the whole Capitol. They were they were the, building the, a perimeter. The whole Capitol perimeter, the lawn, everything is now completely fenced off to where you cannot enter the lawn area at all. You can't walk through from the House offices to the Senate offices without taking the sidewalks on the street, and mm -hmm. then they put up smaller, more removable. Um, barriers around each of the house office buildings to where you can't be, now you can't even approach the steps of them and you can only be on the sidewalks outside of them. Which I mean, I hate to say this, but based on what happened yesterday, probably an appropriate response. 
Um, yeah, uh, uh, um, it, it's a little too little too late. But <laughs> well, yes, obviously. But um, all right, any any parting thoughts or anything that uh, any interesting observations from the other day that you'd like to point out, or maybe something that's happened today? Um, no, I will just say that I mean we did see a few. Um, well, today, for instance, they had fully deployed the um, National Guard. Mm -hmm. And at every office building and around the perimeter of the Capitol, about every 20 to 30 feet, there was a stationed guard member and each of them standing at rest and facing the building for which they were assigned. And I mean, they were all very pleasant. We we walked through many of them, thanked them for their service. And um, I, I will say that they were, in fact, wearing body armor. And I had seen previous report where the mayor was asking that they not be armed or wearing body armor. I did not witness any of them actually being armed, but they were wearing body armor, so at least they were protected, and I was glad for that. Yeah, I was going to say, that seems like a very bizarre order to me to not wear body armor after something like this. I, it, it, it did for me, too, and that was um, the reports that I had seen where that was what Mayor Bowser had requested, was that they be unarmed and without body armor. I mean, after yesterday, I'd be cool with them walking out in a full, like, night suit, you know, <laughs> steel plating and everything. Uh, I will say the Capitol Police were very insistent on nobody crossing the street and getting anywhere near the gate, the um, fencing that was being put up around the perimeter. And we witnessed even a member of the media that went over to take pictures that was screamed at and ran back across the road and told that he could not approach the fencing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm I'm glad that they're being, you know, pretty careful about that now. I, I wish that, you know, we had had a similar response yesterday. And again, I, I don't know why that wasn't there, but I hope that we will find that out in the next few days. Um, before we do go, though, you know, since you were nice enough to be generous with your time and speak to us, uh, just give us a quick plug for U.S. Term Limits and tell us a little bit about what y'all do. Okay, well, my main job is working through the state legislatures on the purpose of a single limited topic Article 5 convention to be able to one day establish term limits on Congress via constitutional amendment mm -hmm. as per what the Supreme Court told us would, it would have to be a constitutional amendment. Right, because they ain't going to put term limits on themselves. Sorry guys, it just ain't going to happen. Right, and our home state of Alabama here passed that resolution in mm -hmm. 2018 and has been phenomenal for us. And one of my meetings this week was with our, you know, my, my now personal representative, uh, Barry Moore, and he had been instrumental in getting that passed through the Alabama State Legislature as part of those efforts. And he is now a congressional pledge signer, and we presented his plaque to him yesterday. And, um, mm -hmm. and he will now be signing on to work on HJR 12, which is being led by Ralph Norman of South Carolina on the congressional level in hopes that Congress will choose to term limit themselves. And that is yet to be seen. Well, I frankly don't hold out a lot of hope for that, but I do genuinely with, I mean, I'd love for that to happen. I just don't think it's going to anytime soon, but thank you so much for your time, Shanna and you and your, your family stay safe. And, um, you know, hopefully that when you do finally get back to the, uh, the yellow hammer state, we can get together and do some more shooting because they closed my favorite gun range. And so, Yes. Well, I mean, well, my house can now be your favorite gun right All right. Well, well that's how we'll handle it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shanna Chambly, uh, for, for doing this with us with uh, U.S. term limits. And like I said, just uh, you and your family will be in my prayers. And I'd ask everybody to pray for you and also pray for the nation. Thank you, Caleb. Hey, if you liked this video, then you should press the like button. I mean, that's literally what it's there for. If you liked the video but didn't hit the like button, then it's like getting great service but not tipping your waiter. Except liking is free, and so is subscribing and hitting the notification bell. So if you're enjoying my content but not liking my video, there's really only one explanation. It's because I'm black, isn't it?